Hi, this is Schieffer's Magic Alcove, and I'm Schieffer Bradigan. So, <clears throat> most of you know that this week has been a kind of uh, extreme week for us, with a lot of uncomfortable events taking place between my granddaughter um, having hallucinations caused supposedly by a bad UTI. First time I've heard of it, but apparently it is something that usually only happens to elderly women who knew. And then Ian's sister coming back with a yelling scream and a bang um, at our door on Sunday, which is why we ended up canceling the live show, because there were so many things that were happening at the same time, and uh, we were kind of thrown for a loop, no doubt about it. So really, it just goes to show you that no matter how good of a practitioner you are and how powerful a witch you might be, there are still things that life can do to us that we have to figure out how to adapt to and respond to um, that we are, are out of our control. So I thought it would make a good opportunity to talk about balance. It made me think about that. Because it's like, balance is the thing that helps us to survive this kind of chaotic, out of the blue, unexpected event, but not just then. It's something that we need throughout our practice, our lives, whether we're <clears throat> magical practitioners or not, balance is a key component to having a, <clears throat> a quality life. So, you know, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about starting off with the basics, like the things that are obvious or hopefully are obvious, even things that are good for us in extreme, either too much or too little, is it's bad. So air, oxygen, in our case, something we cannot live without. If we don't have enough oxygen, that's sort of our most immediate uh, need throughout our life while we have a body. Uh, we only need a few minutes without it, and then that's it. We're on to another level. <clears throat> but too much oxygen can damage our brain and kill us. So if we're like in a hospital setting and they suddenly turn up the oxygen to 100%, and it's not a situation where we need to have it like that. There's only one situation I know of, of pulmonary, uh, a lung pulmonary embolism, I think, or embolism, which happens when uh, a large bone is broken and bone marrow leaks into the bloodstream or leaks out into the body and gets into the lungs and coats the lungs. That's the only situation that I know of where it's medically necessary to raise the level of oxygen up to the point where it's 100%, because the lungs' ability to absorb oxygen is so damaged by that, and they don't have a way of reversing it. It's just a hope it is long enough or short enough that the body starts to recover and gets rid of that, so then it can start to process oxygen normally again. I mean, too little oxygen is pretty obvious, but uh, too much is not as obvious. And I do know of a person who got too much oxygen when he didn't need it and ended up with severe brain damage from the oxygen, having too much oxygen in his brain. So again, it's sort of everything that we have, everything that we do, our entire existence is a... Um, balance of systems that if any one of those things gets out of whack then the whole thing cascades into a failure and we could die. <clears throat> so the other one that came to mind was water, another basic need that we have without which we can't survive. Too little water, we get dehydrated. Um, fluids aren't being made in the system, we start to dry up and so forth, things that 
require water, no longer function, kidneys, etc., start breaking down or stop working. Too much water, however, can kill us too. And we've started seeing that in the last 10 years, I guess, where we've had water intoxication, where the whole push to drink more and more water uh, sort of got out of hand to the point where a radio station in Los Angeles, I believe, actually had a contest. So whoever could drink the most amount of water in a certain period of time would win a pile of money, not enough money to make up for the death of the person who won, uh, but indeed the person who won ended up dying because it diluted all of the the salts and minerals and so forth, the electrolytes in the body that allow electrical conductivity to happen. So the brain could no longer tell the heart to beat, the lungs to work, or any of the organs to function, and the person died. The first time I heard about that was a person who was uh, in his 20s and was an athlete and was doing a, a water fast while he was working out and died from having too much water. And so it's become a known thing. But if you just think about the concepts of balance, it's obvious that that's a bad idea because that's what balance is all about. The body and the spirit and the mind all live in a homeostasis <clears throat> kind of relationship with each other where there's all these different systems that each one has to be able to respond in the right way at the right time in order for the whole to work. And if one of the systems gets completely out of balance with any of the other systems, it brings the whole thing down. <clears throat> but so, obviously food, we need it. If we eat the wrong kind of food or too much of the same kind of food, we can harm ourselves, make ourselves allergic to the food or not eat nutritious enough food so the body doesn't have what it needs to sustain itself. And, and it can devolve into um, a, a different system starting to collapse, whether it's our ability to make insulin and balance out the sugars that we're taking in or the lack of nutrients for the brain to function and for the muscles to work, whatever it happens to be, because there's so many different systems that have to work together in perfect harmony. But then too little food, same problem, starving the body. People die from lack of nutrition. They don't have the energy that they need to be able to function because, you know, we run on energy whether it's the physical, chemical energy of transforming um, basic foods and liquids into the nutrients that our systems need in order to work right, or whether it's magical systems, spiritual systems, emotional systems, they all have um, needs that when something goes to the excess, it causes real problems for people. So, certainly the experiences that Ian and I both had in the last couple of days with uh, having to take care of suddenly uh, someone in our house who's having hallucinations, whose brain is clearly out of balance, who's not eating well, not drinking enough water, is a pretty vivid example of that. And in the process, of course, we're not getting enough sleep. Sleep, another thing that's important to have balance in. Too much sleep, you can't move, you feel lethargic, your body doesn't want to get out of that kind of state. Too little sleep, and you might feel that you're energetic for a while, but eventually the battery runs down to nothing, and your systems start to fail again because it has to have that balance, which is why it's important to think about that from both a physical and a magical perspective. So when it comes to doing our magical work, that is key to consider. If we can figure out how to balance and live with the physical system that we have, and let's face it, almost all of us have got some kind of challenge physically, whether we're born with it because of genetics or a birth injury, 
whether we acquire it because of an illness or an injury in the world where something impacts our body negatively. Uh, almost everybody has to figure out how to deal with some form of infirmity, uh, some lack of balance that has to be addressed and figure out a new balance in order to function. And it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with their soul or their spirit. It doesn't mean that they deserve to have this happen to them. It doesn't mean that it's a punishment from, you know, some other level of existence. It doesn't mean that they're thinking wrong. Um, a lot of those things are things we have no control over. Even if you subscribe to the belief that we choose our parents so we're choosing our body there would still be things that would be out of our control from a genetic point of view from all of the hereditary uh, potential that we're born with throughout our our line that we're a member of <clears throat> so when we're having to deal with something like that not looking at it as <clears throat> as a punishment is a good first step. Looking at it as a challenge that you have to overcome, an adaptation you have to make, whether it's getting a prosthesis that works because you've lost a limb, whether it's taking medication to support a system that's not functioning like uh, insulin with diabetes, whether it's needing to take other kinds of medication so that the brain chemistry is working so you're not hallucinating all the time if that indeed is part of the problem whatever it is it's like to judge ourselves as being inferior because we have something to overcome is pointless in my opinion because it is what we have this is what we have to work with <clears throat> reality is where we're at and of course, this out of balance system works with the whole planet. I mean, the reason why the, um, the planet is reacting the way it is, is that things want to naturally be in balance. For example, the water. So in most cases, drinking distilled water is an incredibly bad idea. The reason is because water wants to have a particular kind of mineral balance in it. And if you put something in your body that has no balance to start with, then it will take things out of your body in order to create that balance. So then it's in that homeostasis kind of state. Um, and I have only met one person who needed to drink distilled water, and that's because of an extreme overbalance of toxic minerals in her system. And the distilled water did its job taking the minerals out of her body in order to make the water the way it is supposed to be. And so it was a treatment for her. Generally speaking, not a good idea, but it's like everything else. If something is completely in this chaotic state, um, sometimes doing something else can help assist that. So, you know, the idea of moderation is part of balance. And moderation in physical food stuff, exercise. If you over-exercise, you eventually wear your muscles out to the point where they don't function anymore or they get so big you can't move anymore. You lose flexibility. Again, balance between strength and flexibility, another system of the muscles and balance and, and everything else. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't matter what you look at, you can figure out that there are ways to in, interact with that system that will help bring it back into balance or, or see why it's out of balance, something that you're doing or something you're experiencing that is making things go out of balance. And then try and look at that to as a way to relate uh, to create some kind of action plan. So getting information to create an action plan is obviously vital. <clears throat> and 
spiritually speaking, most systems put a lot of pressure on the way we think and the thoughts that we have as making our reality the way it is. And to a certain extent, this is true in that if you have a positive attitude and you're paying attention to negative input and recognizing it for what it is, you might be more flexible and have a better ability to come up with a creative solution for the issue that you're facing. But if all you're doing is deciding positive attitude, positive thought, um, no, not entertaining any idea of failure or, or what have you, um, and, and just keeping and pumping up that positivity, that's doomed to fail. Because then when the world, which doesn't care how you feel or think about anything, does its thing and a random person comes by, you're more likely to find yourself in a difficult situation because you no longer have the ability to recognize negative things in and outside of yourself so that you don't have any warning signals in order to get the input to know that something is off and you need to change tactics move yourself, remove yourself, whatever the situation requires. So then you're in big trouble. So for as a survival strategy, that way of thinking is bad, in my opinion. I don't have a problem with being positive. I'm a generally positive, optimistic individual, but I'm also practical and pragmatic. And so if I see a dangerous situation repeating itself over and over again, it is it behooves me to not ignore the situation and say, if only I could think differently about this, this would be a better situation. It kind of relates to the whole thing of childhood trauma and so forth, because that is one of the places where modern spirituality has extremely failed um, society in as a whole, making it your fault somehow that you were born into a situation where you were abused when you were a child, for example or that you were in a relationship with an abusive spouse, uh, whether no matter what the relationship is, whether it's a man and a woman, a woman and a woman, or a man and a man, abuse is abuse, and, um, and that uh, power over kind of dynamic is there regardless of sexual orientation or relationship instruction. Polyamory, it doesn't matter if there is that kind of disparity. The person who is on the receiving end of, of the more subtle forms of the abuse is usually how that starts. And it's like, you know, undermining your self-confidence and using positive thinking, uh, toxic positivity, is a way of doing that, saying it's your fault, making it your fault somehow. The things that you're seeing and perceiving aren't real. They don't matter. Uh, you're interpreting this information incorrectly, you can't trust yourself, it's out of balance. And But to blame yourself for getting into there in the first place isn't useful. It doesn't help you, it doesn't help the situation. Uh, it often makes people, you know, guilt-ridden, beating themselves down, adding to the problems of self-esteem that another person has fed um, to excess in order to like make them behave the way they want them to. Um, so that doesn't help. So if we're looking at ways to function and survive, it's important to take those emotional and judgmental conditions away from the situation and just try and look at the situation. Being alone all the time makes you get out of balance. Because if you're alone all the time, you don't have any way to know whether you're getting into a bad or a wrong way of thinking about the world. If your fantasy reality is taking over and you're getting completely drawn into another universe or what have you, filled with all sorts of fascinating and interesting spirits and beings and so forth that don't have any relationship to the real world at all. Uh, and you can get find yourself like way out there. And that works not just with an individual being isolated, but a group of people doing the same thing and isolating themselves, which is sort of what a cult is. That's what they do. They separate 
you, the individual, put you in a group of all like-minded thinking individuals so there's no differences and therefore no balance and then put separating you from the mainstream of society so that then anything over here is bad so you're not going to go and look for it and again creating an imbalance between these things so <clears throat> and then the opposite of course being too much into a group an insulated group would be the other side of the same thing being in the cult uh, being a member of a spiritual religious practice that thinks that the only way of doing things and, and you are now elevated to some sort of rarefied status and better than everyone else that's again out of balance because <clears throat> there's what seven and a half billion of us out there what are the chances that you would be the one person in the entire world that's born right now that knows all the answers or that you've met the person who does pretty slim so practicality dictates that that's not really a viable option so when it comes to um, doing your magical practice you need to keep that in mind that's why we talk about elemental balance the same issue if you have all fire you're gonna burn yourself up uh, I mean fire is a wonderful element for creativity and for energy and all this other stuff and in a controlled environment keeps you warm uh, you can use it to change the state of materials like blacksmithing and and using a kiln to turn you know a lump of clay into a work of art plate or cup or whatever that then you can use and transform its element into something slightly different by applying the right kind of heat to it glass all that stuff but too much and you end up with the forest fires and the um, droughts that we're experiencing right now on a global level and of course that is why we have such extremes of climate is because the earth is trying to get back into a homeostasis kind of relationship it's trying to have a balanced relationship and be the right temperature have the right amount of moisture um, in the air and and everything and and everything is like an extreme reaction to it because we added an extreme uh, toxin to the environment that now the earth is trying to figure out how to balance so anyway um, so it works for larger systems as well as smaller ones I mean you can go from as big as you want all the way down to you know the individual and what things you're doing and that's that's the trick is to maintain that kind of uh, sensibility um, perspective negative people exist no matter how nice you might nice energy you might put at them four percent of the population that we know of are sociopaths they're not like us certainly not like me I'm assuming not like you because uh, you know my assumption or hope is that everyone who watches my channel is not a sociopath and I'm not teaching them better ways to abuse people accidentally um, and just because some people are evil mean ugly uh, doesn't mean that you did something wrong there's something wrong with them and there may be something wrong with them that no one can fix it may not be something that can be addressed in the normal way it may not be possible because they may be that far out of balance obviously intuition and logic are opposed to one another and there's another example you take any system and apply strictly logic to it and eventually its reality will completely fall apart because reality doesn't work just on logic it's not sustainable and that includes larger reality <coughs> intuition is a real big part of how you bridge the gap uh, between the fallacy of logic and the pitfalls of just emotion
<clears throat> so really as far as anything I can think of it's the lack of balance that causes the problem so when you're doing and deciding your magical practice keep that in mind uh, you know don't do like 30 days of nothing but meditation it's not any better for you than 30 days of fasting without bringing in anything but water I mean and you know deciding to take an attitude where everything is just a reflection of you means that you're denying the reality of the universe that exists outside of us so that's not viable either I mean you know you just have to look at the individual situation air of course is one of the where logic would come in the mental ideas and things there's some wonderful ideas out there I lived with a psychologist for I think almost five years I need all kinds of brilliant ideas of things that couldn't be practically done because it assumed that people could get rid of feelings and emotions and not be human and being human I think is the point that's the whole point of this experiment exercise classroom whatever you want to think of it as it's uh, us becoming human beings is the point and that requires balance so like emotion or feelings are more watery and again like with any element too much of any one thing is bad so too much water can make you extremely emotional way too empathetic an inability to separate yourself out from other people because water is very much you know like spreads itself out into whatever it finds itself and becomes a part of every piece of water it finds out there I mean sure the ocean has got a huge amount of water but you couldn't separate a single drop out of it and say this is you know just the one part of the ocean I'm going to deal with it's like it's everywhere it's in everything and it it sort of absorbs everything so it's like that balance between being emotive and in touch with your feelings and your intuition <clears throat> being logical rational paying attention to your environment paying attention to the signals the universe is giving you no knowing that the world is composed of both what we perceive as positive and negative interactions and results and so forth from the environment around us if you ignored the sound of a tree cracking when you were out in the woods and you just decided that that didn't have anything to do with you and it was you know just the way it was or I don't know maybe a bad example but if you ignored it you might end up getting crushed by the tree at which point you would realize that was a bad idea <laughs> to ignore it so you know the environment is going to impose itself on us whether we like it or not and to think otherwise is wasting a lot of time and energy of what we could be doing more productively with ourselves and our lives and learning how to balance who we actually are what we actually have you know where we exist and within what systems what works and what doesn't work and it's going to be different for everybody that's why I'm rambling around just drawing on all kinds of different examples um, and we see it in nature all the time like if one creature say uh, suddenly multiplies like crazy and starts to consume their environment if nature has its way then its natural predator will suddenly increase in numbers as well because now the food source has just blossomed and we'll start trying to balance things back to a more sustainable structure interaction with the environment that they're in and when 
it succeeds, the predator succeeds in doing that, then the food source has dried up to the point where it can't sustain the population of the predator, and then it starts to dwindle. You know, they start to die off because they don't, they don't have what they need. We saw this when I lived up north. Uh, we had a couple of years of extreme uh, berry crops. I mean, the conditions were perfect for berries to just go like crazy all over the valley. And because that happened, there were more bears born because the bears really like the berries. It's actually one of their main food sources when they first come out of hibernation. Um, well, maybe not very first, but anyway, it was definitely a big food source for the bears. And so they multiplied like crazy. And then we suddenly got some years of drought where not as many berries were produced. And then the number of encounters between people and bears suddenly increased because now the bears are out there looking for a food source and the people who had chickens and livestock and so forth that the bears were interested in suddenly had bears coming onto their property when they hadn't seen that before. But it was a natural attempt to rebalance the whole of everything. And so everything has a consequence. It doesn't matter if it's a positive or negative thing. It's going to have a consequence. It's going to have ripples out there. It's going to shift things around it, just like that old pebble in the pond kind of thing, which everyone loves to talk about. <laughs> and it's a good analogy because, you know, here you go, plop, and then all those ripples go outward from that center, and they continue to interact with other ripples, and, and you know, you end up with all these connections between things that wouldn't have happened if the water was just still and nothing moved. We're not in a position to be still and not have anything move. That would mean that we were probably on the spirit in the spirit world completely and no longer incarnating into a body, which seems to be what a lot of people want to do is to get out of here and, you know, go away and never have to come back because it's hard. It's like, okay, so it's hard. I don't disagree with that. It's challenging. It's sometimes discouraging. It's often confusing. Um, but I don't want to not be here. I want to experience the beauty and wonder of nature in its purest form, which is being alive. And I have said this before, if all of us who are evolving left, we'd be left with just a bunch of monkey people not knowing what they were doing, trying to figure it out all over again, and then we start from the beginning. So balance. So anyway, I don't know what I mean by that, but... So, um... We talked about Earth in passing with sleeping too much, which would be like too much Earth in the sense of immobility, immovable kind of stuff, uh, lack of energy, Lack of motion, because, you know, Earth is all about heaviness, validity, illness, um, and that kind of thing. Again, you know, got to balance it out with everything else. So when you're looking at your situation, whatever it is, try to identify the places where you're getting in your own way, by thinking too much about the reasons why this is happening. If you let go of the greater mystical meaning behind everything, it's a lot simpler to actually figure out how to survive in here, in this life, in your body, in your life, in your community, and so forth, which leads to the balance where then you can pursue more of the spiritual stuff. So, I mean, you know, the monk who sits on the top of the mountain for 40 years and never encounters anybody is often considered enlightened, but then the first time he encounters people, he gets really mad because he has no muscles to figure out how to respond to the sudden influx of people being different from him and interrupting his thought processes. So, you know, it's like, wow, all right. I guess it depends on one 
an individual's definition of what is enlightenment, and there's certainly plenty of discussion with that. And I think that this is actually comes out of my commitment to try and face reality for what it is instead of for what people either want it to be or think it is and have defined it as. If I let go of everyone else's interpretations of what's happening to me, um, I'm left with Ian's sister comes from a family of mentally unstable people. Ian comes from a family of mentally unstable people. There's a definite genetic component. Mother is schizophre was schizophrenic. His brother was schizophrenic. And whether this happens in other types of schizophrenia, there seems to definitely be a genetic component with Ian's family. And um, their ability to respond in a flexible manner to the changes around them is one of the issues at the core of that. And Ian struggles with that himself, figuring out how exactly to respond when circumstances suddenly pull the rug out from under him and he's left there not being able to do what he wants because the universe says, aha, we have other plans. So his family, um, his sister's children don't know what to do with her. So in their desperation to make their lives more comfortable and less chaotic because it was very uncomfortable and chaotic for them, they basically dumped her here and left us to try and figure out how to deal with her. And we can't deal with her either. We don't have, there's, there's no functional method because her brain isn't working. Her brain does not work. It's not working right. And whether she could understand that it's not working right and put herself into treatment is questionable. And the way society is set up, if you can't understand that something is wrong and you need help, you can't get it because then you will refuse it and no one will make you have it. So it's like, you know, it's just sort of the way it is. So the bottom line in this case is our safety is more important than her insanity. And whatever she's going through, our safety comes first. Our family comes first because this is our primary place of, uh, <clears throat> of being. And um, we're claiming our, our spot. So it's, uh, see if it works, I guess. I'm going to see about getting an anti-stalking order, I think. But I don't think it's my fault. I don't think I have done something wrong, thought some wrong way in order to bring this upon myself. I don't think that this is deserved. I don't think that this is karma. Although we think about that every so often, like, why us? I don't think that's it at all. I think it's just happenstance that... This is his family genetics. And because it's his family genetics and his family, that's why it's coming to our door. There's a direct link. Just physically, if nothing else. So um, we have to face reality and figure out how to deal with it and what we're going to do with it. We would like to be so powerful that we could just get into her head, rearrange everything that's there, and make it make sense to her so she could go away and leave us alone. So far that hasn't worked. We've tried. <laughs> and we'll continue to try, but um, if we got results, that would be awesome, but I don't count on it. In the meantime, we have to keep ourselves safe. So she can't, she's not allowed to come here. She has been trespassed off our property now more than once. And like I said, we're looking into getting an anti-stalking order. You have to set healthy boundaries. And that's, again, balance. Now, if my boundaries were so strict that only two people were allowed to come anywhere near me, that would be out of balance. But knowing myself, what I'm capable of, what I'm willing to do, I make those choices for myself, and I stand by the choices that I make. I don't care if anyone else likes the choices I've made or whether they agree with the choices I've made because they're not living my life and they're not in my skin and they're not in my house and they're not trying to take care of my loved ones. It's like a pointless exercise in 
taking in too much information from people who don't know what's really happening. It's just really the internet <laughs> in a nutshell, isn't it? Like every time you say something, a whole bunch of people will jump in and tell you what they think you're doing wrong or how they think you should fix it, even if they don't know anything about your situation or what's happening. I would like us to get out of that habit. Instead, coming upon something like that, say, is there anything that you need that I can support you with? What can I do? If it's leave you alone, that's fine. If it's just send you energy, that's fine. If it's answering a medical question because I happen to be a medical doctor, maybe so, you know. So it's part of that uh, thinking of ourselves is so important to everything that's going on around us, I guess. Yeah. But everything in balance so, you know, you have to feed yourself. You need to learn how to cook and clean at least the basics or be so wealthy it doesn't matter and then you're not interested in any of this stuff anyway. Because you have other people to think for you or, I don't know, it's a different kind of rarefied environment. Again, out of balance, too much of anything, including money. Too little of anything, including money. It's like everything in balance. Some of this, some of that, not too much. But, um, yeah, it doesn't really, no one can live your life for you. No one can figure it out but you. Although you can reach out and ask questions, you still have to make the final de decision. The determination is yours, which is why I don't do psychic readings the way other psychics do readings, telling people what to do. This is your job. This is not your job. You should move here. You should move there. It's like, that's not personal growth for somebody. That's just telling them what to do. And then if it doesn't work, then it's your fault. I don't like being blamed for stuff that's not my fault. <laughs> I figured that one out a long time ago uh, with a friend of mine. And I realized I was trying to get her to leave her husband because she was in an extremely abusive situation. She would come over with black eyes and, and whatnot. But that... You know, she had to want to do do it. Encouraging her, yes. But making it about me and then her trying to follow my instructions and it was a mess. It would be a mess. So one of the things I did uh, last night my granddaughter, well, I was trying to get her to go to bed, and she was being very frustrating. I was very frustrated. I was like, ah, slap, slap in my head. So I actually did the tree meditation because it was pretty clear she wasn't going to get in the house on time to calm things down to the point where she could go to, to sleep. And I thought I need to do something for myself. And I was amazed at how how much I enjoyed doing that again. Watching my own video <laughs> was kind of interesting. But then after I went to bed last night, um, about a quarter to 12, I'd actually fallen asleep and been asleep for 35, 40 minutes or so. All of a sudden I hear this loud voice in the house and I'm startled awake and I throw on my house coat and stumble out into the living room in the kitchen to find out what the hell is going on in my house and my granddaughter is having another full-on hallucination thinking that there are people outside with dogs and the police and they're they have just uh, wrangled a suspect to the ground and everything is going to be okay and when I got out there all of a sudden there were no lights outside she realized that it wasn't real was very upset I was not happy to say the least and uh Got her back into bed, and I went back to bed, and then they couldn't sleep because I was on I was on alert. I mean, yesterday definitely put me on alert. I was hyper. What's the word I'm looking for? Vigilant, hyper vigilant. And so after that happened, after I went to sleep and I tried to go back to sleep, it was like there's a creak in the floor, the wind is blowing too hard, there's a car going by. So I actually got up and I went and sat in the living room in my in my chair for about two hours 
took a few catnaps while I was out there, I decided if something else was going to happen, I wanted to be in the living room, had the curtains open so I could see outside in case something happened, had the cameras on, the TV monitor, so I could look and see if anything was coming. And after two hours of that, nothing happened. Everything seemed fine. And my granddaughter was asleep. And so at that point, I decided it was safe for me to go to bed. So I did, and then got up this morning. So, you know, I did what I had to do to take care of my house, myself, my granddaughter. Um, and, yeah, it's definitely stressful. Body's not happy with it. Took a bath today to relax and let some of those things drain out of me with my Epsom salt baths um, and ate. So, sometimes you have to do things out of balance because you don't have a choice. But then as soon as you can, try to get yourself back into balance is a good idea. Because if you're maintaining that level of hypervigilance constantly, then it wears your system out, your adrenal glands just go crazy. And, and then that's not good either, you know, balance. So, I guess that's enough yakking on my part trying to update people and have something that's meaningful about um, our magical paths as well at the same time. And uh, so hopefully some of you will find this useful and help you think about your own situation, whatever it might be. Come up with methods to address any physical or emotional infirmities or mental infirmities that you might have that you're struggling with and get as much support set up for helping with those things as you can and uh, recognizing them for what they are. Things we have to figure out how to deal with whether we like it or not. And not necessarily your fault. So, with that, this is Shefer Brad again, and this has been Shefer's Magic Alcove, Blessed Being.